something. His name is just one. It is Jesus Christ. The one that we're all here to exalt this morning, his name is Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something, he is right here in the room. He tells us when two or more than that is seeking him, there he is. And I don't know how it was your week. I don't know how it was like even like now leading to this whole weekend, even the storm that we had last night. But let me tell you something, Jesus Christ is right here in the room. And he is all that we need. So to him we shout all our praise. Amen. Come on, amen. How excited are you for this morning? How pumped are you for this morning? By the way, who's from Bowmanville? Poor Parasites. Ajax. Pickering. Online. But the most important, who is from Sanctus Church? Shout out for now. Yes, this is who we are. All sides, different backgrounds, ages, nations. And we are one because of Him, because of Jesus Christ. And man, there's nothing better than that for all of us to praise Him, to worship Him. And by the way, as we are here now, let me tell you, like this past weeks, months, we have all like now like worked hard for this day and we're super pumped like staff wise volunteers by the way like from parking lodge guest services prayer team every single area can you put your hands together for all the volunteers involved all that they have done all the staff all the hours our leadership it's been so awesome and we're so excited for this but see like let me tell you something it was not only us adults that were preparing for this day Quite the opposite. Let me tell you something. This past few weeks, all over our sites, in Ajax, Port Perry, Bowmanville, Pickering, except online because we couldn't do like online. But all over our physical sites, our kids, they were preparing so hard for this time. And by the way, all the kids in the room, can you make like some noise? Where are the kids in the room? Are you here? Come on, kids and they were all the kids they were preparing for this day as well and they have a special treat to all of us so i need a favor all the kids you got a bag there there's a, like a glow stick in the bag i need you to grab your glow stick and for all of you come here forward with me all of your kids come here parents help me out and we have some kids coming to the stage right now so come on all of us can you put your hands together for all the kids from all different sites 
that are gonna come here and we have this special treats to all of us. By the way, parents, grandparents, adults, young adults, you may be seated now for a second. Sit down where you are. Uh, also like grab your cell phone there. Get your camera because this is gonna be like an amazing, amazing time. And yeah, as I said, like all these kids here, they were working hard all these past weeks. Why? Because they want also to shout out their own praise to God. Why? Because they want also to shout out who is their lighthouse, who is the lights of their own lives. Hey, what's up? Yeah, welcome here, guys. Welcome. Come on, come on, parents. Come on, kids. Come here forward. Yes, don't be shy at all. Yes, we want this to be a beautiful chaos. So yeah, take your time and come here, all of you. We have more space here in the front. Well, come, come, guys, come. Woo! This is so, so awesome, eh? And this is so awesome. No, no, it's all good there. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, we have all of them coming. I see like, I see Kai right there. What's up, Kai? <laughs> so kids, are you guys ready? Yeah, you, you know the drill. We have like, I know that like all these past weeks we were preparing for this, but are you guys ready? But we want to see like if now the adults are ready. So adults, I need your help. You're part of the team as well. So come on, put your hands together. Let's go. Come on, let's sing in my wrestling. My wrestling in my doubt. In my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, and you will carry me safe to shore. so much it's so awesome seeing each one of you and all that you have done but see like we we care for the next generation we care like actually just realizing that hey if you think for a second if you are a parent the kids that you have given by God to each one of us 
so precious, made in God's likeness, in God's image. And in all of that, it's like as God cares for each one of them, we care for you guys. And by the way, like can we all pray for the kids all over different sides? Pray that actually now for the moments that we're all living in in society, where there's so many like things out there to teach our kids. It is right here realizing that God he is our lighthouse. And, and guys, let me tell you something, all kids. Yes, Jesus, he is the light of the world, man. And you know, like when you go like through some stuff in life that you are like, you know what? It's like, I, I feel like that there's something like here, like inside of me that is not like working well. Let me tell you something, Jesus Christ, he is the light of the world and he wants to show himself to each one of us. And it requires all of us, adults, kids, adults, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, to keep praying for them, to keep like now teaching them, educating them the best way. By the way, can we give a huge shout out to our whole like family ministry team, directors, pastors, in all different sites that we have. All the volunteers, how they're serving our kids. But as we do this, it takes a whole village to raise our children. So can you stand parents, grandparents, adults, young adults, youth, where you are? Can you stand for a second? Can we all pray for them? Are you guys cool with that? Can we pray for all of you? If you want to extend your hands right now towards all of them. But bring your own prayer to God and say, God, please bless all our kids. And God, here's the, the cry of our hearts. Not to us, but to your name. And it's your name that we're all here this morning. It's the name of Jesus Christ. And yes, Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. That even sometimes when we go through some darkness, or when we feel that the room that we're all in is quite dark, but when we realize who you are, Jesus Christ, you're the light of the world, and you want to come into each one of our hearts and change us completely. That's why we pray now, God, for this next generation, for all these kids, from the youngest to the oldest, we pray, God, that you, that you come like so close, draw them all near to you, God, and come so close to them to change their lives. Holy Spirit of God, as you're here moving in our midst, I pray that you touch each one of them, that even through this whole gathering, Spirit of Jesus Christ, show your lights, shine brighter lights to all of us. And we pray blessings over them, God. We pray that they may be raised every single day with our, their families, with their parents, at church as well, God. Through every single channel they were able, we want to teach them that Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus Christ we pray. Can you all guys say amen? Amen. amen. Now the kids are going to go all back to their seats with their parents. Which is so awesome. Yeah, it is a beautiful chaos. And by the way, like, no, don't stand for a second. Just uh, don't, don't sit down. Stand so, like one more time there. As we're, they're going back to their seats, can you just like now turn five, six people around you? Like shake some hands there. Say hi to them. Like say, hey, where are you from? Two minutes, we're going to be back here. But come on, like, just go and chat with some people around you. So, so awesome that we can all like now just come as a whole family and chat with each other. Hope like you're able to see some people like from perhaps like it's been a, a, a year. Last Palm Saturday for us, first one that we were doing last year was so awesome. And again, this is so amazing that we can all come together and simply worship God. By the way, my name is Lucas Prado. I have the privilege to be the Pickering Site Pastor. And also I have like here with me, Angela Mason, the one and only Angela. Ajax side pastor, and she's so awesome. How are you, Ange? Oh, I am so good. There's no better place I would rather be than in a party in the house of the Lord, right? Woohoo! Ange, we have Lucas. like here people like that they are have been in our church for a month, mm -hmm. but some others they have been here for several years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have seen so many people. I felt like when I was in the lobby earlier, felt like a family reunion. 
I was seeing people from various sites that I have known for years. Oh, it has felt so good. I'm so glad that you all chose to be here today. And it's interesting because like, Ange, you have also like been part of our church for quite some time as well. Is, is that an age joke? <laughs> I, how, no, long, how long have you been serving at Saint's Church? Okay, yeah, I have actually been on staff. This summer be 19 years. Wow, wow. Wow. Now, so, now I will say, my first role was pretty short, a small, oh wait, now it's a short joke here. <laughs> okay, my first role was, was small in capacity. I started in a small role, and then I had like four kids. So I had some times where I was official, and other times where I was volunteer serving like so many who are here today. Wow, so I think like as you see people in the lobby, you can also like just see, hey, this one here has been in our church for 10, 15 years. This other one, almost 20 like you, yeah. which is like so amazing. By the way, we want to celebrate like for a second here. Each one of us, that you have like your own journey, your own like now like being with us for how long it's been. But we want to celebrate that. And we have a small gifts here. By the way, like back there as well in the lobby, we have this amazing uh, like what? what? What can I say that? Like it's a, we oh, were set up like such all, a variety like, of merchandise out there. And we're all selling them like amazing stuff. But we yes. have like some free ones that we want to give here. By the way, like let me ask, if you have been here in our church for less than one year, can you raise like your hand if you have been like less than one year? So, Mr. I can see like Mr. Doug right here. Like, can you just like now stand up where you are? We have like a gift here for you. And it'll be a special one. I don't know if you like coffee or not. But man, yeah, like now like we're in the coffee business. So come here, Mr. Doug. We're gonna give you like now this coffee a beans. Special morning brew coffee roast. Morning brew. I didn't brew. wanna give it up. It smelled so good. But we'll pass it along to Doug and celebrate that he's been here for a whole year. Welcome in. God bless. Welcome. What else, Ange? Oh, yeah. We have a hat there. I think that we need to celebrate someone who has been here, who has been serving at Sanctus, someone who's been serving for five years already. Who has been serving at Sanctus for five years? I saw, I saw like a hand there. Can you come here? Come here to the front, yes. Joanne? Five years or so. This is so awesome. And what's going to be? Welcome. It's going to be... The, the hat, notebook, you choose. A hat, a notebook. She's a teacher. Let's give her a notebook. I love Praise you. Teacher, blast, writings. It's good for you. That's it. So five years now, like 10 years. Who has been here for 10 years? Someone, 10 Might years. Might as well. Let's start Raise your hand. So come on, like the first person to come here I in the I see Mr. Fronts. Cabral. 10 years. Come, come here. Come on up. Yes, yes, yes. This first responder needs another hat. Come on. Get the guy hats. Yes, you'll love it. Tom Cabral. Tom Cabral, the Cabral family. Thank you to the Cabrals. Oh, we love your family. We're so glad you're here. I still have more, Lucas. Let's keep going. Let's go. Let's okay. go. I, I forget the count. Were we at 15 years? 10. Ten. Oh, well, then we need to jump, right? Let's, let's jump. All right, let's see some 15. Who's been here? You're getting close to me now. 15. Oh, Rob is standing up out of his seat before we could even yell it wow. out. Come on up. Determined. Totally determined. Here we go, guy. Enjoy, man. And let's, let's finish it like now with 20 years. If you have been here in our church for 20, 20 years, years. If we go to anyone? 25, I have to call John Thompson out, but he doesn't get to win Whoa. this. So who is someone 20 years? How many, how many years? Heidi Baker. Come here. Come here. 35 years. Wow. Thank you so much. We love your family. So glad you are here. Welcome. We were, we were supposed to say like, uh, yeah, like we were good. If we would go like with John, like how long John has been in our church? Too long. Yes. No, no. I'm... What is that? No, we are so glad and so thankful yes. for John, but we can't give him a prize. He, like all the rest of you, can go out and purchase some of that merchandise. That's it. That's it. There is some beautiful things out there, hats and stickers. Just an amazing assembly of things that you can purchase because you want to be able to remember today. You want to be able to advertise Sanctus. Yeah. And I know that you want to be able to just celebrate the unity that we all wearing this stuff will actually prove to represent because we are a part of one body. Amen? Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of this morning. They were all one. And I just like remember uh, Jesus' prayer to the Father. That they may be one as we are one. 
Amen. And this is for all of us. As we come here, we can celebrate each other. But knowing that what brings us, unites us all, it is Jesus Christ. And in Him, we are one. This is so awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. So awesome. We're so glad to celebrate that today. Now we recognize we've been celebrating those who have been here for a long time. And I also am going to assume that we have some guests who are here with us today. And so if this is your very first time, we welcome you. If you are feeling new, if you've been just coming to check out Sanctus, we want to get to know who you are. And so please, before you leave this building today, would you stop in the lobby at the guest services area Introduce yourself to us. Tell us who invited you or what prompted you to come out. And we would love to acknowledge your visit here with us today. So thank you so much for joining us here. It's been an incredible time of worship, hasn't it? Well, don't worry, we're not done. But before we continue in our worship, I just want to take us to a time of giving because giving is also part of our worship. And so I want to invite the ushers to come forward. You know, I just encourage you to look around the room. As the ushers are coming forward, would you look across this incredible room and see for yourselves the impact, the size, the potential that our church has to reach our communities. And I think that together, as we just look, look around at the diversity, I feel encouraged and I hope that you do too. You know, we are united as one body. And when we come united, that's what makes us capable of being able to make a great difference in reaching our communities for Christ, especially in the Durham region, but beyond as well, right? So here we are today, reunited by the Spirit of the living God. And I know that we can reach the vision that he has entrusted to us. This is possible as we give of ourselves and as we choose to support the mission. And what's our mission? To glorify God by reaching and enabling people of all ages and nations to become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. That's what has united us together and brings us in excitement. You know, we recognize our Heavenly Father is a gracious and giving God. So today we give because He gave. Now there are many ways that you can give. Right now as the ushers start to pass the plates, they'll receive your offering. There are other ways that you can give as well. You can go online, sanctuschurch.com slash give. You can text to give. And we do have multiple giving stations out in the lobby. I encourage you at this time, as you give, say a prayer and say, God, I trust that you will use this. Help me to see what you will do with it. You know, earlier this morning, Cheryl and Brandon were sitting up here recounting a number of ministry highlights that have happened since last Palm Saturday. And as we think about those things, we know our God is good and our God has multiplied our gifts and he has done incredible things. But all of this only happened because you chose to give and support the ministry at Sanctus. And many of you have already signed up to become reoccurring giving givers. And I just want to say thank you so much for choosing to do that. If you haven't made, considered being a recurring giving or setting that automation up, I, I encourage you to do so. On your seats, you'll find there are cards. And those cards include our Easter invite information. But if you flip it over, there is a QR code that's going to take you directly to sanctuschurch.com slash give. Please take that home with you. That particular little link will help lead you so that you can set up recurring giving. You know, it doesn't have to be anything huge. It doesn't even have to be a certain percentage. But I encourage you to start. Start with something small and let's just see how God multiplies it and uses it. And we are thankful. Genuinely, thank you. Thank you so incredibly much for how you have given and how God has multiplied it 
And so I wanna just take this time now for us to pray a prayer of dedication to what has been given, but I also wanna pray for all the things that are still to come this morning. So will you pray along with me? So please, Lord God, we dedicate our offerings to you. And we entrust, Lord, that you will take what is given today, that you will build your kingdom. God, will you hear our prayers? Father, we, we talked earlier today about how you have been at work in the lives of many. You have been transforming people, people who went through Alpha, who then were baptized, who then are living lives so different from the lives that they once had. God, we prayed and thanked you for what you did through Marriage Course and how you have reconciled relationships. We praise and thank you, Lord God, for various events in which you have invited and encouraged and drawn people into the house of Sanctus. And so, Lord, we ask, would you do immeasurably more than we could imagine in that? Would you continue to multiply the gifts and grow your kingdom? Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that we are not the only church. We don't believe that. We know, God, that there are so many churches in our area, so many people in ministry, so many staff who are following the calling that you have given to them. And so we pray for other churches. We pray, God, for the variety. And we ask, Lord, that you will use these churches, that your community will expand, that your kingdom will grow, that your name will be lifted high. Lord God, even this morning, as we think about this particular service, God, I pray for Pastor John. Thank you for what you have given to him. Thank you for the message that we are about to hear. Would you fill him, God, with your spirit and help us, God, help us to be attentive. Soften our hearts, open our ears, help us to hear truth. Help us to see where you are at work. God, we want to follow you because you alone are the one that's worthy of all worship. You alone are the one that deserves our worship this morning. So God, we lift all praise to you. We bring our praises to you. We ask God that your name is lifted high, that you and you alone are glorified in this place. Would you hear our voices and may it be a sweet sound to you alone. God, you are the one true God. You are the God deserving of all praise. Hear our cries. May your name be lifted high. We glorify you. We glorify you because you are the God of all promises and you alone will answer our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, why don't you stand to your feet as we continue to worship today?
we give you praise. We just honor you, Father. Are we ready to press in deeper in worship this morning? Just fix your eyes on Jesus. He's worthy of a thousand hallelujahs and more. No. 
in your own words this morning just worship the lord god almighty the lamb of god who sits on the throne he's high and lifted up he's exalted forever and ever oh jesus we bless you jesus we praise you jesus we praise you if you don't have the words to say just say jesus i praise you because he's worthy of our praise oh yes we praise you oh jesus we praise you. Lamb of God who sits on the throne, we praise you. Oh, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you, God. Oh, yes, we honor you, Jesus. With our life, we honor you, Jesus. With our songs, we honor you, Jesus. Because you're worthy, you're worthy. Come on, let's raise our voices and sing praise to the Lord. reminded Psalm 40 where it says he doesn't delight in just going through the actions the motions he's not looking for another burnt offering he's not looking for us just to come and come to church and sing some songs he's looking for hearts he's looking for hearts who love him so just take a moment and just give him your love give him your own heart say thank you if you don't have the words just say thank you Lord. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior now to wash our feet. Come on, now at His feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame is now robed in majesty. The radiance of If you know this one, let's sing it with everything you got today. Your name, 
so Lord, we just thank you today. We're so thankful, Jesus, for who you are and what you've done for us. Because God, we were broken. We were scared. We were full of shame. We are tired. We had nothing, no way to get to you, Lord. And you sent your son, Jesus, you chose, you chose to take our place, to make a way for us. And so, Lord, in the same way that you laid your life down for us, we come to you today as a church, and we lay ourselves at your feet. And if that's your desire today, church, I just encourage you to tell them, I worship you, Lord. I give you everything today. You're worthy of my whole life, everything I have to give. We pray this in Jesus' most beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you have a seat? Well, family, isn't it good to be together as one family? So glad that you've taken the time to come uh, today. We did this for the first time last year, and let me begin today where I did last year at this time, reminding us that in the next 24 hours, two billion people are going to declare that Jesus is still welcome in our world. It's just so important. But let me take you back just for a quick moment to that moment 2,000 years ago. And like I said, let me begin where I did last year. Jesus looked across the sky that day, the sun coming up, and the reason why he was born, the reason why he left heaven, the reason why he left angels and perfection and his father was now here. This was the moment, this was the beginning when Adam's fall and all of Israel's history and all of humanity's hopes and purposes and dreams and all things lost would be dealt with. His best friends, the 12, were still sleeping, I guarantee you, at that moment. And though they had been told time and time again, they did not know that this week would hold all that it would hold. Terror, betrayal, loss of hope, sudden death, and then amazing physical resurrection. And so this weekend, we are invited to walk with Jesus into Jerusalem, what we call the triumphant entry. And let me read really quickly out of the Gospel of Mark. It reads like this. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two disciples ahead. Now, like I shared last year, it's important we hear this. This is not a random route. In the Old Testament, this route was used by King David, this exact road, when the civil war ended between the Jews. When Israel was finally reunited, David came through this very route into Jerusalem, marking peace and triumph. And so as King David brought peace and victory, Jesus is now starting to show us that he would bring peace between humanity and God. He would conquer death, sin, and the demonic, and the civil war that has been raging over the human race since the time of Adam would finally begin to be over. The true son of David, the true king was coming on that same road, but the results was no longer just for one ethnic group. It was for the whole world. Anyone want to say amen to that this morning? Well, back to the story in verse two. He said to two of his disciples, you go to that village ahead of you, and as you enter into it, you'll find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here to me. Now, what's striking is Jesus, if you read Mark, has walked for three years. The only time that Jesus was not walking is when he was in a boat. So this day was not unusual like any other day. He walks from Galilee and suddenly he needs to ride a donkey two miles outside of Jerusalem. No, no, it's not that he's tired or having a moment. This is incredibly intentional. This was also to send us a message. King David, when that civil war was over, rode on a donkey to declare that the true king had come. And again, we've talked about this as Christians for decades and for centuries. A donkey for a king, not very impressive. But let's put away our cultural bias and understand this. 
Mary rode a donkey, and Jesus was within her. And now the one who was born rides the donkey to die to fulfill the reason why he was born. And a few of you in the room will know this. This was predicted all the way in the Old Testament. This act, riding on a donkey, reveals who he is. Messiah, anointed one, divine warrior. The whole Old Testament points to Jesus and waited for him. It's all the way back in Genesis 49. Listen to this prophecy that Jesus fulfilled on this very weekend. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest of branches. He will wash his garment and wind his robes in the blood of grapes. This act on an entrance by a donkey will lead Jesus to spill his blood for the sins of the world, the blood of grapes. But out of that brokenness will come salvation. Near the end of the Old Testament in Zechariah, even more so, this is fulfilled in Zechariah 9.9. Rejo rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous, having salvation, gentle, riding a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So Jesus comes that day as he is supposed to on this donkey. But as you might know, he's not alone. This is Passover. Hundreds of thousands of Orthodox Jews are descending into Jerusalem to worship. And in the middle of that crowd, Jesus of Nazareth begins to be recognized. You read like this in verse 7. When they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw cloaks over it, and he sat on it. And many people started spreading their cloaks on the road, and others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. So you've got hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands of Orthodox Jews coming in, and Jesus is among them. And suddenly they start cutting branches and putting their cloaks on the ground. Peter and others are so excited because finally their rabbi is getting their due. And in the middle of that crowd... We sitting here don't understand sometimes the power of this. See, within Jewish understanding, cloaks and branches are connecting to welcoming a king. All across holy history in 2 Kings, even in the time between Malachi and Matthew during the time of the Maccabeans, when people put cloaks on the road or cut branches, it was declaration that the crowd was saying they're supporting the coronation of the true king. And then the king that they had been waiting for finally had come, and he's on this donkey, and everyone begins to sing and shout like we've been today, and then they begin to chant out of the Psalms, and this is what they say in verse 9. They said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming of our kingdom of the Father David. Hosanna in the highest. So this weekend, as I've shared, we are gathering with billions of people, welcoming Jesus, declaring Jesus, saying he's worthy, saying to Jesus he's still welcome into our world. This weekend, the church in all of its forms, from free churches to high liturgical churches, from cathedrals to house churches, from mega churches to the 380 million Christians that are under direct persecution right now, to the thousands and hundreds of thousands of small neighborhood churches, we are all going to declare in one voice that Jesus is always welcome. Now, I want to stop, though, and for the last few seconds here, I want to remind us that it is true historically, but it's true in this moment. Uh, Pastor Lucas said it. Let me say it again. The same Jesus that rode on that donkey, the same Jesus that the crowds sang to, is in this room right now. This is not just history. This is now. We talk about this all the time at Sanctus. This is a guaranteed place of encounter. That's not metaphor, it's true. What did Jesus promise and say to us as Christians? In Matthew 18, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And at Sanctus, we work really hard to build right expectation. But I actually want to just pause and remind us not only who is in the room, but actually remind us who he is in his entirety. I want to remind you scripturally who actually Jesus is in his entirety. That same Jesus that rode on the donkeys in this room, and who is he? So I just want to do this very plainly. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. There is no one like him. The same person that rode on that donkey who's in this room by his spirit right now is called the Great Amen. He's the faithful and true witness, and he is the ruler of God's creation. Let me just remind the church today, the news is crazy. Things are bad. Who owns God's creation? Jesus does. The person in this room is the author of life. He's killed, but God raises him from the dead. 
The person who's among us right now and will be in every room that celebrates him globally in the next 48 hours is the bread from heaven. He's the bread of life. This is what he says, whoever comes to him will never go hungry. Whoever believes in him will never be thirsty. The person in this room that we've been singing to and giving to is called the bright and morning star. He tells us where to go and he tells us what truth is in a world that no longer believes in truth. The person that we are encountering in this room right now is called the chief shepherd and the good shepherd. Aren't you thankful that Jesus lays us down in green pastures? Aren't you thankful that he restores our souls? Aren't you excited that he prepares a table in front of our enemies? And most importantly, are you not thankful that the good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep? Do you want to say amen to him today for that? The person in this room, and we need to remind ourselves, sometimes when you're close to someone, you get so used to them, you forget how profound they are. And Jesus is like no other person we hang out with. Jesus in this room from Nazareth is the Christ. He's the consolation of Israel. He's the Holy One of Israel. Jesus is the Messiah. Jewish people today in Jerusalem will pray for the return of the Messiah. They don't need to. He's already come. Jesus is the King of the Jews, and he is the fulfillment of the Jewish faith. The person in this room that we're celebrating and we're joining the global church, he is our deliverer. Let me just say this again. Sin, death, and the demonic are broken by him, and they will never gain power again. Ever. They're done. Jesus, who is in this room, is called the gate in the New Testament. And he is also not just a gate. He is God. When Jesus rose from the dead and one of his closest friends, Thomas, wasn't there and would not believe, and then Jesus showed up, he said this in John 20. He said to Thomas, stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said back to Jesus, my Lord and my what? What does it say on the screen? My God. And Jesus accepted that. That's so important. The person who's in this room right now is the heir of all things. He's our high priest, he's holy and righteous, and he's called the horn of our salvation. The world, all of our friends and neighbors, you can go on Twitter or Instagram or all sorts of places, and people will say, oh, Jesus is a great man, he's a prophet, he's a miracle worker, he's one form of God, he's an inspired humanitarian, he's a revolutionary, he's a person of historical significance, he's a gifted religious leader, but in this room, and every loyal room to him around the world, we're we're going to declare and keep declaring, no, Jesus, you're not just a prophet. You're not just a spiritual leader. You're not just a political revolutionary. You're not one incarnation of God. You're not just a great religious teacher. You're not one path among many paths to God. You're not crazy. You're not a liar. You're not Satan. You are Emmanuel, God with us, and you are the great I am. That is who Jesus is. These words on Palm Saturday have to be recaptured in our heart, though they are offensive to the world. Remember what Jesus said to his own friends and also the religious leaders in John 8. He said to them boldly, before Abraham was born, I am. And at this they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself. Jesus is not just a prophet. He is the God that met Moses at the burning bush. Jesus, the one that walked into Jerusalem, who's in this room by his spirit right now, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and he is the last Adam that has dealt with all the problems of the first Adam. The person in this room right now is the light of the world. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And oh, by the way, we've sung it, and let's keep saying it. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. That is who Jesus is in this room. This person in the room, as we walk into Holy Week, also we must remind ourselves, he is a man of sorrows. He knows our suffering. He chose to enter into our suffering. He's also our master. And amazingly and most beautifully, he is the one mediator between God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all people. Jesus, who is in this room, in this gathering right now, is the Passover lamb. He's the pioneer and he's the perfecter of our faith. And oh, by the way, he is the prince of peace. Who thinks we need peace in our world today? I do, but he is the prince of peace. The person in this room right now, the same one that rode that donkey, is our rabbi. He's our teacher. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the righteous one. Oh, and this is so important we hear this. Jesus is the ruler of God's creation. Jesus is is in control. History is not spinning out of control. Do not believe what you continually see on your algorithms and feeds. 
Jesus is fully in control of his father's history. Do not fear. The person in this room is called the savior of the world. He's the son of men. He's the son of David. He's the son of the most high. And he's the spiritual rock. And lastly, I just remind you, very simply like this. Jesus, who is in this room right now, is the resurrection and he is the life. Death does not have the final say. Every time we attend a Christian funeral, though it is brutal and difficult, we know the truth. As Jesus physically rose from the dead, so we will physically rise from the dead because he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I end with these words, as John, his best friend, said, the word who was with God in the beginning also is God himself. I remind you, because sometimes we're so used to this, that what I just described is not some moral code or an abstract theological idea. All of that is true about the one person who unites us in this room. And like I say all the time here in our local church, if our unity was based on us agreeing politically or by gender or by ethnicity, none of us would ever get along. But who's brought us together in this room? And who brings us together with the global church? Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, who brings a unity that makes no sense to the world, but makes sense because we are now children of God by the election of God the Father through Jesus who rode on that donkey who fills us with his Holy Spirit. Can we say amen to that today? Can we give him worship today? Can we give him worship today? He's worthy of all worship. So thank you, Lord, for this moment. Thank you in this very small moment we've reminded ourselves of who wrote in. And we just wanna say as we go back one last time to worship you, Jesus, you're welcome in our world. Jesus, you're welcome in our families. Jesus, you're welcome in our church. Jesus, reveal yourself. Help us never get too used to you. And we just wanna say we are so thankful that we get to join the global church and also already those who are in heaven just to give you honor and praise this week. Be close to us, Jesus, this week. We need you so desperately. Thank you that you are everything you claim to be. In the name of Jesus, we all said, amen. amen. Let's stand and let's worship the resurrected King one last time. to flesh and bone to pay a debt that was not his own selfless he came our God unrecognized to pull us close back to the Father's side he saw joy and so he sacrificed let's sing what love is this what love is this that you died for when I
you left the glory of your throne. That you left your glory. And you came to this wretched earth to die for us. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for my iniquity, Jesus. The chastisement of my peace was upon you. While you stayed, you stayed on the cross. You went down the pain. You went down the shame. You went down the fear just to set me free. So why would I praise you? Why won't we praise you? Come and lift up your praise to this God. He is worthy of our praise. Oh, yeah. generations.
hurt your affection.
church, as we have experienced the presence and the power of God, Pastor John beautifully articulated the beauty of Jesus and who he is. And this morning as we are closing, I hope you have had an opportunity to encounter Jesus. But we still have a few moments as we were worshiping during the service. I saw a, a vision of Jesus standing right here with his, his arms were like. And from his presence that he is here there are three things that came from his presence. One was his voice, his hand, and his feet. And his voice is here today to speak words of life and comfort and hope to you. And I hope God has spoken. If not, we want to just give a moment of opportunity to encounter his voice this morning. That God will speak life to you. To those who are brokenhearted, to those who've come this morning who have come with hurt and pain and loss and confusion, his voice is here. And then his hand was outstretched to welcome and said, come, come. But his hand was there for healing and deliverance. And some of you as we worship, you may physically feel the hand of God upon you. And God may heal you, some of you from sickness, some of you from brokenness in your heart, and deliver you from whatever demonic oppression that you are facing in your life this morning. His hand is here to touch you. His hand is here to draw you into his presence. And then his feet, his feet are a sign that he is here, he is with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as his feet are there, his feet is not only here, as you leave this morning, his feet, he will be with you and walk with you wherever you go because he's promised us he will never leave us nor forsake us. And this morning we will have our prayer team here, our elders who are here to help you in prayer and in connection and encounter. And so we just want to let the worship team take a moment to lead us in this final moment of worship. But I want to encourage you as King Jesus is standing here with his arms outstretched, let his voice speak to you, let his hands touch you, and let the promise of his feet and his presence be with you and know that you can encounter him right now. Encounter him right now. Let's give a moment. Before we leave this place, as Pastor John has shared, he is here. He is here. We can read about him 2,000 years ago. We read him out in his word, but he is here. His hand is here. His voice is here. And his feet is here. Let's just encounter Jesus this morning. Let's pray and worship him. Day and night, night and day, let it set rise. Day and night. take this moment this morning and encounter his voice. Let him speak his words of life, and love, and hope, and peace. He's your good shepherd. He's your savior. 
He's the Lamb. He's the bread of life. He is here. Let His hand reach and bring healing this morning. And believe today that He can heal. And I believe that there are some here this morning, physically, that God is going to heal you right now. And that He will heal those who have been broken. Where your heart has been broken through disappointment, discouragement, you've been disillusioned with life. He heals the brokenhearted. And He's here to deliver. For some who have just been constantly attacked by the enemy. Through the voice of the enemy that has confused you. We thank God today as we sang, there's victory. And as we've heard through the sermon, that God has conquered the grave. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us from God's hand. And His feet is here. He is here. May you feel His presence. He is with you. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the moments we can encounter you. That you're not a God that is distant in a strange land in a universe above. You're not just a God that is recorded in pages of Scripture, but you're a living God. You're not the God, you're not a God that's dead, but you're a God that lives and lives forever. You're not a God that is made of stone and wood, but a God who speaks, a God who's present, a God who touches, a God who is with us. And so I pray for all of us as family, for those who don't know you, Jesus, I pray that our hearts would open and just say, Jesus, we invite you in. And if you don't know Jesus this morning, just say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, speak to me. I don't know if these things are true, just speak. And so, Lord, we thank you for this special moment today where your word says where two or three are gathered, you are here, Lord. Whether we see it, we feel it, we understand or comprehend all what's happening in the spiritual realm, we know you are here. And so, Lord, even as we close and as we go from this place, we take this moment to capture in our hearts, in our memories, and in our spirit, your word today, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so I pray that you would bless us Bless this community, bless us as a church. I pray, Lord, for all of our communities in, in Ajax, in Bowmanville, in Pickering, in Port Perry, and online, and whatever you may have for the future. I pray, Lord, that you would bless our church. Lord, that we humble ourselves before a great God who loved us and gave himself for us. Who are we that you would visit us? Who are we that you would love us? Who are we that you would be our chief shepherd, our leader, our master, and our Lord? And so we follow you. Holy Spirit, guide us and lead us as a church that we trust you. We walk in humility and love, knowing that you are the one who guides us as a church, and we ask your blessing upon it. And we thank you for this moment. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. And all of God's people say this morning, amen and amen, amen, amen. This morning, before we just depart, I just want to take a few moments to say a few 
thank yous and also just invite you. We have our prayer leaders here, our elders. And so please don't rush. Use this moment to come and have significant times to pray and to encounter Jesus for doing so. I just want to first of all thank God for this beautiful facility for Shannon McBeady and the entire Canada Event Center staff here. Let's thank God for them, for Ryan McBeady and the Canada Christian College. You have been fabulous in your partnership and support for us to have this. Thank you so much. Also, just want to take a, a moment to thank a few of our, our staff leaders. I want to thank Pastor Trevor, uh, who's <laughs> led this entire event. Thank you. And some of our significant leaders, uh, Courtney, who's been our event manager, Colin, who has been our production director behind the scenes, running this whole thing, uh, for Robin, who uh, has been leading, significant part of our key leadership team they have been, so thank you. Also others, Pastor Holly and Adam and Jordan, the family ministry team did a fa fabulous job, and Michael Baxter, Lucas, and the entire staff, I can go on, but thank you. And most of all, thank you to all the volunteers who've given above and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, not only for today, but day in and day out, from week to week, your, your thankfulness to what God is doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so as we go, just have a call to action. This coming week, we have our Easter weekend, Good Friday, and Easter services across all of our sites. Uh, all of our sites at 1030 on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We have services in Port Perry, Pickering, Bowmanville. And in Ajax, we have two services, 9 and 11, on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday, so please join us this coming weekend. So may God bless you as you join. As you go out, there are some cookies and coffee. Stay back, linger, connect, talk, enjoy each other. It's a time of reunion. Don't forget to connect in, in prayer with our prayer team. I'll pray this blessing from Ephesians chapter 3 as we go. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in christ jesus throughout all generations forever and ever amen and god bless you as you go out the parking lot's full the doors you can either take any entrance out please be kind to your neighbor as you're driving out uh, we have a large group God bless you this morning.
Thank you.